Indian weddings are getting bigger and brighter. Wedding, five and a half thousand. As a sit-down, banquet-style event. And more expensive every year. Average wedding comfortably 100K. Like, 100K goes nowhere nowadays. And one family is at the centre of it all. Everyone judges everyone in their events. So that's why they want to go one up from the last wedding. Meet the Goodrells and their grand hospitality empire. Party never stops, it just continues. Led by Manjit Goodrell. The family business is at the heart of Sydney's Indian community. I'm old fashioned man for them, but old is gold. Eldest son Deep runs the dazzling events business. You know how the groom arrives on a horse? Yeah. yeah. We actually got an elephant. Big weddings, high spend, clients that just go all out. While younger son Varun is at the helm of the family's fine dining restaurant. Anytime you produce something new, you're putting your heart and soul on the line. This is a family business at the crossroads. Coming out, polishing required on the other side. Can the ambitious brothers... Take this and take it my way or don't take it at all? What is wrong with you? Answer me that question. Persuade their father to bring the business into the modern world. I am a little bit nervous. Are you the groom and groom? <laughs> just give me six months of trial, let me just do my way. I'm dying to pull out a new menu. Indians will not touch it. I do not want to lose my Indian clientele. I won't even look at it. I really don't want to promote as a gay wedding. But change is never easy. Oh my God. I'm, I'm done doing standard. I want to do next level. It's another day at the office for 66-year-old Manjit Gudra, the founder of Manjit's Hospitality Empire. He is the brand, and hence he will not let go of that because of his brand, because he's the brand. He feels like he needs to be part of everything. Sons Deep and Varun feel the time's right for Manjit to begin handing over control. We brought them in the world, we saw the childhood, we made them grow up, we got them associated in our business. They were very helpful and we were all the time teaching them, teaching them. And all of a sudden we started finding that things are turning and they don't want us to interfere. But Mandit isn't ready to let go just yet. At the family's flagship restaurant on Sydney Harbour, the brothers are considering a proposal to radically change the direction of the company. I think this is a great opportunity for growth in um, your hospitality division mm. in terms of diversifying um, not only within the Indian market and becoming a name within the Indian market, but also away from the Indian market as well. Deep, head of the company's events business, has brought in marketing consultant Ash for a different perspective. Manjeet's hospitality and associating that name with weddings is great, but it'd be even better for me as a white person to go, I'm getting married, mm. I'm not going to think to go to Manjeet's because I don't want butter chicken at my wedding. Mm. But it would be good for me to go somewhere mm. and there's nothing stopping you from being that somewhere. You've got the contacts, mm. you've got everything, you've got the knowledge and you've got the experience. So you're saying set up a second operation saying, I see with a different name. I'm seeing... And call it white person catering. and then White person catering. And they come and book in and... Yeah, I think that's a great idea. I'm always up for expansion. I'm always up for um, getting bigger. I'm always up for essentially growing the business. Deep's younger brother Varun runs the family's restaurant and has his own ambitious plans. All right, let's talk about this new menu. All right. Varun wants to overhaul the restaurant's menu so as to attract a younger, more diverse crowd. Before we start, I went through the menu. It's good. The only thing that I have a couple of issues with was the fact that there was something written about this can only be made if the chef de cuisine yeah, is here. Yes, that has to go. Impossible. No, I'm not, at a certain level, I'm, I'm not negotiating on, and that's it. Yeah, I didn't mind that. I... No, it can't. They, and if he's sick on that day? Fantastic. It's not no, available. No, How cool it. is that? Yeah, no, it's, it's not it's cool. It's, it's not... very much cool, dude. And you, this is the difference. No, yeah. that's, not, that's not on. That, there's one I'm never, then I'm not, Dude, take this and take it my way, or don't take it at all. And I'll, I'll sit back and just cook whatever the hell you want me to cook, but that's, I'm not negotiating on certain things. I'm trying to make it cool and hip, and you guys are stuck back in 1960s again. It's just, Wake it's up to the new world. No, it's no, very it's... much that, dude. How cool is it? Because the chef can make it for us. Oh, that's awesome. The chef runs in tonight? Oh, yeah, I didn't get to have it last time. We'll try it today. 
You get it, right? Please tell me honestly. As a 10-year-old, I'd run down the stairs to watch Saturday morning cartoons, and my grandmother was there, and she'd be roasting the spices for the week and everything, and she'd make me an alu pranta, which is like a, like a potato pancake with, you know, between bread. And then slowly growing up and just not caring about the cartoon so much and just spending time with her and learning how to roast the spices and smell them, get the aromatics right, and watching her cook, and she was a phenomenal chef. I'm trying to achieve this restaurant to become great. Well, that's... The, the, the staff have lost the wow factor. The, the, I've lost passion. If I can't be innovative, and do, this whole reason this restaurant was here is so I could be innovative. Why, why, why don't you do one thing? Why don't you fix that? Put, put your menu as normal. And you say today's special. Before you, uh, let me complete the whole. Put, his, put your special special. Listen to him. I know, but I know what he's going to say because you. So let him listen to. There's him. a step-by-step -step procedure. Let me finish. Let me have everything I want to set off my chest. Then I swear to God, I'll be quiet. Varun invented a butter chicken sorbet. This was a cold butter chicken. It tasted horrible. It tasted so bad. It was very much my experimental phase, and my brother's never going to let me leave that one down. And I, I guarantee he's the one who told you about it. I, I, I know enough about... I know a little bit about restaurants. You need to half your menu and put the correct dishes in there. You know, this is turning into a Chinese restaurant. For the two competitive brothers, there's only one opinion that matters. I do not want to lose my Indian clientele. I do not want to lose that. For Manjit, there's a big risk in his son's plans to move the business away from its traditional Indian base. I'm still controlling the standard of Manjit's brand. So now Manjit is fading down. Manjit's brand has to go up. That's, that's the main thing. The Gudral family run a function centre based at Concord in Sydney's west. And then Rosa. After decades of focusing on the local Indian community, Namaste, Namaste, hello. Hello, Deep. Hello, Deep, Deep has started broadening his clientele base. He's now dealing with a whole array of religions and cultures Christian, Muslim, Jewish. Hello, ladies. How are you? How are you? And today. It's your crowd tonight. Chinese tonight. We've got guest arrival within the hour, and the room has to be fully set up with cutlery, crockery, glasses, plates, spoons, napkins, runners, chair covers, decorations, the DJ has to be set up inside, the sound check has to be done, laptop has to be set up, there's also some decorations in the foyer that has to be done, the buffet needs to be set up, drinks table at the front, so we've got all that to do within an hour. With a first birthday already done and almost dusted, Deep's team are on a tight turnaround for this afternoon's Chinese wedding. Deep manages up to 500 events a year, often working seven days a week. Here, happy birthday to you. Does anyone want to pop? Today, Manjit and Varun have come across from the restaurant to help him out. Is bright, can I knock it inside? Hello. How are you? I'm Manjit. I'm Deep's uh, father. Very pleased to meet you. Heartiest congratulations. <laughs> you know what? We have one thing in common between you and me. Uh -huh. We, I got married 38 years ago on this date. <laughs> uh, today is my wedding anniversary. It's a special day every year, which is on 16th of October, uh, 1980, which is going 38 years ago. Um, we might go out somewhere tonight to Chinatown or so. Definitely no Indian food, I can assure you. <laughs> So we'll just do a trial run very quickly to make sure they all go off together. You can actually put your hands right on top. And nothing else. It's not actually fire. I can't say you won't dirty your soup. I should have gone into restaurants. It's so much easier doing what Vern does. Cook the food, put it on a plate. And as Vern, I'll get to decorate the plate nicely, make it look pretty, and then get it to a waiter to serve. And I'm the chef de patron, or chef de cuisine, whatever you want to call it. Mr. MC? Mr. MC? But the chef de cuisine seems to have forgotten something. I didn't wish my parents' anniversary. I need a favor. I didn't remember that anniversary present. Tonight? I didn't realize it was the anniversary. I forgot. I didn't get him anything. Um, can we go up the road and get something? 
flowers or something? Yeah, or... yeah, sure. Can you just get something for me, please? Yes. I'm not worried, Dad. Get something for Mum, all right? Okay, I will. Flowers I will. or something. I will for Mum. Don't worry. One thing they always say, uh, Deep says you love Varun more, and the Varun says you listen to him more. I have only two boys, so I want them to be together. Unlike her ambitious sons, Gwal had no real choice about her future. She arrived in Australia from India in 1984 after an arranged marriage to Manjit. I was studying. I was doing master in economics. One day, my aunt, they said they found a boy for me and they wanted me to get married to him. I wanted to finish my study and do some job and then get married. But uh, they said, no, uh, this is, uh, no one asked me actually. <laughs> and they said, yes, you are getting married there. And uh, yeah, even I said, I was crying and this and that, but no one listens over there. And then I got married. <laughs> yeah. It's not falling, falling in love in India. At, in our time, now it's different, yeah. In our time, if something, something broke, we used to fix it up. But nowadays, if there is something not you, like, you don't like, just throw it, buy another one. Same, I think, apply with the people they don't like, they just leave them, divorce, they go for another one. In our time, it was not like that. Hmm? Got everything. Oh. You want me to ride the Let's... card or you... You write you the card. That's the card. awesome. That's perfect. Like it? Yeah, that'll do. Nice. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you. Can you write the card, dear mum? Yes, I'll be doing the card. Happy anniversary. No thank worries. you. I'll write thank the you. card and then I Legend, put this thank one you so in much, Melinda. No worries. Oh, and your card. Ah, uh, women. Always trying to take my money. Our secret, oh, sorry, our religion, Indian culture, you know, if you're not married by 32, you're like an outcast in society. I don't know why we sort of focus on this whole thing. I think it's a very much old generational thing. I don't want to get arranged marriage. I don't believe in arranged marriage. I am very much married to the restaurant. That restaurant is my life at the moment. Um, it's my you know, girlfriend, wife, whatever you want to call it. It's my mistress. Happy anniversary. Mum and Dad, we love Varun. Hello, Indramani. What's up, How are you? Good. Dad, how are you? Happy anniversary. Thank you. Hi. Nowadays, children wants to do whatever they want to do and uh, he is looking uh, for the right person. Need any help? No. All good. Huh? All good. I put him on the sale, mm -hmm. and uh, <laughs> if he is not sold, then it, he goes on an auction. <laughs> <laughs> so, so. Happy anniversary. Can I get to his phone? Oh, thank you. Thank oh. you so much. Oh. There's a lot of healthy competition there. <laughs> um, Deep and Varun. Deep and Varun are... They're almost two sides of a coin. That was on both of us. And yeah. Nishka. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Nishka. I met Deep at the function centre because that's where he lives. <laughs> I realised very early on that if I'm going to build any kind of family life together with Deep, I will have to be part of his world. So I think the way the business and the family operates and is structured, it'd be very difficult for someone to marry into it and go and have simply a full-time nine-to-five job elsewhere and not get involved at all because you'd never see your husband. <laughs> you just, you would never see them. We're gonna get your baby brother. We're gonna get your baby brother. We're gonna get your baby brother. We're gonna get your baby Three weeks ago, the Goodrals welcomed the newest addition to the family, Deep and Natasha's son, baby Zavan. With our children, we used to feel they are doing, they are naughty, they are doing this. But with the grandchildren, I hardly find anything they are doing wrong. First, you're going to give them a kiss. It's been challenging, especially since we had children, because we're not just working and then coming home and juggling a family. The family is the business. The business is the family. There's there's no real separation between the two. Mishko, your baby brother got your presents. Thank you, baby brother. Thank you. It's a very taxing industry. Wow. You do it because you love it, and you do it because you're ready to give your life to it. What are you going to say to baby brother? You say, I love you. The arrival of the new baby also coincides with the peak spring wedding season. 
Deep has an Indian wedding to prepare for, his 127th of the year. The saying goes with Indian culture that the most expensive thing in a person's house is the house, and the second thing is the wedding. Although not one of the biggest weddings on Deep's calendar, he still has 280 guests about to arrive and everything needs to go perfectly. They don't care about their cars because they mostly drive Toyota Camrys. That's the most immigrant Indian car there is. But they spend money on the wedding. But some things are outside even Deep's control. I'm going to purposely delay it 15 minutes. Cool? Yeah. Because it looks odd if you walk into nothing. It rained on my wedding. I couldn't be happier today. I think that's a white person thing. I think we need to move this one back as well. Wrong, wrong, wrong. Put the square table in the middle. Can I get all the staff? Naresh, how hard is it to get all the staff here? Let's get canopies out. Let's get drinks out. Deep needs to get things back on schedule. Train folks, you know where you're sitting? Which table? No idea. As you look at the stage on the left-hand side, all three drums and the butt there. Okay. All right? There is a huge heightened sense of emotion for the bride and groom, in particular with Indian culture, um, the sense of, OK, all my family and friends are around. What will they think of me when I'm doing this event? How does that place me in their eyes when I do this particular function? How's the fireworks? Good. I can see, I can see you dodging and weaving through. Yeah. <laughs> While Deep brings his own unique style to the functions. Just a Coke. Yeah, okay. You know, I can spice it up for you. The Indian community still see Manjit as a bit of a rock star. Dad likes to come to the restaurants and the events and just check up, and all these random people come up to him and shake his hand and want to take a photo with him. I'm like, he, he really didn't do anything, he just turned up. It annoys everybody. But it's okay. It's 11 o'clock and the party kicks on. Deep still has work to do for tomorrow's functions. I missed Mishka going to sleep. I missed Natasha going to sleep. Well, Savan going to sleep. I missed um, having dinner and watching TV with them and all that sort of thing over the weekend. I missed it yesterday as well. And it's going to be pretty much the same thing again tomorrow. You know, there's a saying, the show must go on. So the show must go on, even if... We've set a system up whereby even if something happens to me on my drive to work, if I get into a car accident, there's a file here that sits on my table for every event, and it has everything written on that. So even the most senior waiter to the most junior kitchen hand could pick that up and say, OK, I understand what's happening tonight. Deep doesn't need to be here. But Deep being here has the element of the client's Satisfaction, I mean, that assurance that everything's fine. Party never stops, it just continues. In less than six hours, Deep will be with his next clients in a struggle to stop their dream wedding turning into a nightmare. If two people get bad service at a meal, OK, it's bad, but it's not the end of the world. A wedding goes bad, it is the end of the world. It's early morning. Western Sydney. Good morning. How are you? You look nice and fresh. Deep's only had four hours sleep after the previous night's function. Today's event is on a scale too big for the family's own function centre. All the canopies out? Good. It's a Sri Lankan Hindu wedding with over 500 guests expected to arrive. Yeah. Oh. Average wedding, I would say, comfortably 100k. Like 100k goes nowhere nowadays. This isn't an average wedding. The event will take place across two vast rooms, a total of 3,000 square meters of floor space. That one looks a lot thinner than that. The beauty of our industry is that everyone judges everyone in their events. 
There's still flowers to go all over the top now. It's uh, basically doing better than the Joneses next door. So that's why they want to go one up from the last wedding or the event, uh, which is great for us because that also brings up the market as well. I sculpture. Before you start any ceremony, before you start anything in the Indian culture, you pray to Ganesh. And Ganesh is the god that looks like an elephant and with human hands and legs and feet and all that sort of jazz. Now, um, if you walk into an Indian house, generally Ganesh will be at the front door. I'm Sikh, but obviously because I'm dealing with Muslims, I'm dealing with Jewish Indians, I'm dealing with Christian Indians, I'm dealing with um, a whole array of religions, um, I come, I, I gather a lot of understanding between the cultures and religions from all the different aspects of their lives, especially when it comes to weddings. I could have worded that better, but anyway. This is the Goodral's first restaurant. Opened in 1987, this Sydney suburban establishment is one of the oldest continually running Indian restaurants in Australia. Manjit is a man, Manjit is a brand. Manjit will die one day, but Manjit's friend should not die. The restaurant was Manjit and Kowal's first baby. But to keep with the times, Deep has asked the company's marketing guru, Ash, to perform a risky restaurant makeover. In our line of work, it's always important to deliver something fresh, something new and something different. It gives guests an excitement of being different and unique and very dynamic. This is the first time Manjit has seen the results. Look at that, what, what they've you, done. Well, that's good, I'm glad there's a smile at least. I think he's not the type that rejects things off the bat. Oh my God. Or <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's a little bit darker. Yes. It is very dark. It's very dark. It's very dark, but it's sexy. Do you think it's sexy? Yes. Manjit started very popular overnight. It was like a cues in the front of the restaurant. It was. Are you having a good time? I better introduce, this isn't a random Indian man that's walking past. <laughs> <laughs> um, Manjeet's our founder. Oh, yeah. The thing which came in my mind was being a marketing person, I can feel there is a demand of Indian food. People are enjoying it, spicy food. Once you start liking spices, you don't leave them. You then, you, you can't go for blend again. This is 32 years now, yeah. this particular place. And uh, I'm coming here after four months. And in my absence, my son, they changed the whole color scheme and everything, yeah. which, is, yeah. which looks uh, different to me. <laughs> <laughs> Manjit seems reluctant to fully embrace the restaurant's makeover. And one wall, I want to keep it celebrity wall. Celebrity wall? Yes, yeah, celebrity wall, which I know it must be, Deep must be thinking it's old fashioned, but I've got so many celebrities who have come and written beautiful notes. Yeah, of course, yeah. So I want to keep that. People love the food. People, people like uh, Turonis, Linda Kiloski, Paul Hogan. Fill up with all the paintings and paintings and paintings. And paintings. Just little spot touch. Think here. maybe one in the centre there, one in the centre there. Something modern, but also Indian as well. There's so many Bollywood stars. So we could put um, a Ganesh or something because um, they're welcoming and they, they signify beginning and stuff like that. So it'd be nice to have at the start so of the restaurant. Some nice Indian girl with the. Uh, with sari. I thought instead of that, maybe what do you think of a Ganesh? Like a modern Ganesh? Well, then the Indian cricket team started coming in. They were really close to me. Different I can Ganesh. make Ganesh tea, yes. Something, yeah, like a, a modern, beautiful. Where do you want that? Do you want to paint on the wall or do you want to paint me on the. What's easiest for you? I can do both. Kapil Dev was very, very close to me. I've got heaps of photographs of Kapil Dev. Okay. So I wanted to put sitar, tabla, oh, yeah. uh, like all it. the you know, Indian instruments, yep. you know, yep. cut them and put them everywhere. After three months of planning, Ash's bold minimalist vision has been shattered. Putting a celebrity wall there wouldn't bring business in the place. I don't think we really need it, but it's just it's going back to the original and we want to go the other direction. I'm old fashioned man for them. Uh, but and I appreciate that. Uh, but old is gold. Well, listen, the platters are ready. Yes. They're garnished. Get them on the platter. Their staff will do the service. Yeah. Okay, you work on that. You do pony papri. Deep Sri Lankan wedding ceremony is well underway, and the couple are now exchanging garlands. For Deep, that's a sign that 500 guests will now need to be served entrees. Your true job is run up and down, pick up the food, go upstairs over there. Pick up the food, come downstairs pick, and go up there. Up and down, okay? That's what I want you to do. 
There should be some vegetable cutlets. They're frozen cutlets. Small ones or big ones? Small ones. But one important dish seems to be missing. Was there any vegetable cutlets, frozen the cutlets? How different is the catering business to the restaurant business? Chalk and cheese. Run, guys. Run there and run back. Both me and Varun disagree with which one's harder. Vegetable cutlets there. What? You fucking left them at CFC and we're serving entrees now and they're still at CFC? What the fuck is wrong with you? What the fuck is wrong with you? Answer me that question. I don't want to see you. No, what's the point of you doing anything from now on? My brother has one big group of people to feed at one time and effectively I just see that as one table in a restaurant. Right, just feeding them the same dish, there you go, there you go, there you go. Varun is dealing with multiple investments of smaller amounts from individual customers. For me, every single table is a function. Now, whether it's your birthday, anniversary, every single table is a small little mini function, right? And you can't stuff any of them up. So if two people get bad service at a meal, okay, it's bad, but it's not the end of the world. A wedding goes bad, it is the end of the world. What is wrong with you? So that's why I do lose my cool at functions. And if things don't go correctly or the way we're planned, it, then I do lose my cool. Get out. Get out. I don't want you here. Pack your shit up and get out of here. Push the entrees a little bit late, but we got through at the end and, and it was all successful. According to my pedometer thing, we've already done, it's 1 p.m. and we've already done 15,000 steps this morning. So that's pretty interesting. At the family's restaurant overlooking Sydney Harbour, coming out, Manjit is in complete control. No, all the all the way. Yeah, yeah. Excuse me, take it away. I'm not happy. Get another table. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just touching it. Polishing, polishing required on the other side, and then follow the other one. In the kitchen, Sun Varun is secretly working on his new menu. So experimenting with some cool little funky concepts we got today. So this duck has been confined in its own fat. Varun's new menu will replace many of his father's traditional Indian recipes that have been passed down through the family. At the moment, it's still in the experimental phase. It's hard convincing Dad to yeah, move away from that traditional aspect of Indian stuff. There are dishes in there I think Dad's not very keen that guests will purchase. For example, duck. Now, duck is not a very Indian thing to eat. Chef Varun is caught between pleasing the tastes of the traditional Indian community and his desire to offer a more adventurous dining experience. For the last two years, I've been dying to pull out a new menu. So the cuisine, I love cooking. It's very much a mix of traditional Indian meets modern Australian cuisine. That's quintessentially who I am. I'm a person who is brought up in an Australian society and then there's the other side of the spectrum, which is the family side, the, the Indian cooking, the spices, the aromatics. A simple dish, right? When he's in the kitchen, I try to avoid going in the kitchen. I'm staying outside. But I sometimes tell him that you cannot keep changing your menu. You have to keep my old tradition dishes the way we started it. People still come after eight years or nine years and they've migrated to Australia, Canada, wherever, and they want to go to Manjis are still alive, yes. Where are they? We want to have the same chicken with a pink color, with a cashew on top of it. That means we know it's a butter chicken. That's food point to me. That, that's actually sexually, that's a sexual, that's a sexual piece of um, duck right there. See, that looks beautiful. It might look sexy, but Varun's new dish still needs his father's stamp of approval. With the new menu, I have not tasted it. First of all, I have to taste it. It's not gone in the market as yet. I have my own market. He has his own market. His is a new generation, and you know, mine is old. It's crunch time for Varun. A taste test will determine whether he can realise his culinary dreams.
My toughest critics are my family, quite simply, and they, they are the toughest people to please. At the Goodrile's flagship restaurant, Varun is desperate to break with family tradition and strike out on his own, just like his great uncle did with his famous butter chicken. As the story goes, a gentleman from the English army wanted a non-spicy curry, and it was my great uncle that said, here's a bit of Campbell's tomato soup, a bit of cream, a bit of chicken tikka, Mix it all together and Bob's your uncle, butter chicken's born. 31, 31. Before the crucial audience with his dad, Varun has decided to test his culinary creations on a few friends. I was experimenting with my friends first, and when I say friends, I mean people who aren't just gonna smoke and blow smoke up my ass and say, oh yeah, it's good, it's fantastic. It may look unconventional, but Varun wants his fish curry to stand out from the crowd. Instead of yeah. serving it with a rice or a naan bread, yeah, yeah. string hoppers with the South Indian, sorry, Sri Lanka sheep. Yeah. So it's a very different approach to normal sort of Indian food, right? Yes. Right, enjoy Thank collagen, you. have fun. Thank you. I must admit, it tastes better than it looks. <laughs> I know the spices there, I know the flavours there. Um, they said the fish probably was a little spicy for them. I like spice, you know, so maybe it's because they're, they're white, right? So it's catering to them. And now the chef's special, the divisive duck. This is a more of a controversial dish. We were saying this earlier, I wouldn't necessarily associate duck with Indian food. With Indian food, yeah, exactly right. And duck is one of my favourite meats. Same, same with me, good. but not enough venues do it. I, I like it. Round one. And Varun's new dishes have passed the friends test. I can feed a catering for 200 people and every single one of them will say that was phenomenal. You get you know, three of my family members, oh, Jesus Christ. That, that's, that's when you, you, you know, beads of sweater coming in the... Kitchen. That's what you're stressing out. Nice to meet you. Nice While Varun tries to push gastronomic boundaries, at the function centre, it's still the traditional clientele that make up most of the business. And not much has changed since Manjit's very first event. I saw a wedding of about 300 people that they are cooking themselves and bringing some food. So that's, in fact, that's the look. Yeah, that's yeah, the look. Yeah. That looks yeah. the rest. Yeah. And I've got paneer sliders. I said, why, why are they doing? We've got everything. Why can't couple, why can't we start and bring four curries and give it to them and get some people, waiters, to serve them? That was my first great success. Wedding, five and a half thousand. As a sit down, banquet style event. So that sits down the whole room. Predominantly our main work is weddings and wedding receptions. So you know how the groom arrives on a horse? Yeah. Yeah. We actually got an elephant. We got the elephant from Western Australia, brought him over, they had the barats for the horse, and did the entry at the Gudwara. It was a Sikh wedding. Wow. Other events that we look after is obviously engagement parties and anniversaries, a lot of social events, birthday parties are big. First birthdays are very big in Indian culture. So we're looking to do her first birthday. Being us Indians, we're not the best when it comes to timing. So yeah, I would I suggest 11.30 arrival to guests. By the time they reach yeah. Ruzuri is about 12 o'clock. But I don't want rice and curry, so it's all cocktails. No, 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 okay. no rice and curry at all. Okay, great. Just because it's to, lunch. We do not have to even mention the word rice or any curry in the whole yeah. function. Total come to eight zero five. Let's say eight thousand flat. Um, to book the date in is a small deposit. It's only a thousand dollars. That's it. The date's yours. Congratulations. Thank you. You're booked in. Lovely meeting you. Happy. First person is seen as a very important part of Indian culture, as um, I believe, and uh, I mean I could be mistaken in this, but I believe that in India a lot of children don't make it, and generally speaking, if a child's made it to a first birthday or uh, when they reach one. There's that element of assurance from the parents that, okay, the child will be fine. Deep and Natasha's first birthday celebrations for their daughter Nishka lived up to expectations. I was so over the moon when she was initially born and I thought, okay, her first birthday, I want to do it 
amazing. We took a five-star hotel out and we had celebrities there and we booked a bunch of rooms out for the guests that would come from overseas. We had live petting zoos inside the hotel. Jumping castles, desserts, sweets, lollies, candy buffets, ice cream carts, fairy floss machines. Then came the bar. And so we said, top shelf spirits for everyone. It made our community, our Indian community say, wow, first birthdays can be done like this. It, it, it did raise the bar of um, first birthdays and I'm proud of that, you know? When I finally did a costing of the actual event itself, um, I don't think even dad knows till today how much it ended up costing. A, a little shy of 200K, all up. Guests arrive at 11 a.m. Most of them tell, uh, I told 11.30. People will come not before 12 o'clock, I can tell you. Hang on one second, your invitation says 11 o'clock. 11 o'clock, okay. All the white people are gonna arrive at 11 o'clock. What, what time it says? 11, 11 o'clock. Before he's even turned one, new baby Zavan first has another milestone to celebrate. One that needs the whole family to agree on. People have high expectation. I can handle 3,000 people, but when I have to do a party of 30 people at my home, uh, my hands are shaking. Then your staff will very quickly put the tables. Are we going to do tables? Huh? Are we going to do tables? Not too many tables. Not too I? many tables, Just but some three, old people. Three, four, four tables is enough. Right it there, reserved for elderly people. Remember, it's, it's a right. holy lunch. Yes, I understand. It's not a party. Having a new baby has absolutely turned my world upside down. Good and bad. Uh, good because it's so much joy, so much love. The bad side is he's already an events child. I can tell it. I can see it a mile away. Because come 9.30 at night time, all the way till about 3.30, 4 o'clock in the morning, he is the most vicious thing out there. It's Party Boy Zavan's naming ceremony, and 250 guests are joining the family. Hello, everybody. To celebrate the Sikh ritual called Nam Karan. I think, is it a Nam Karan? Yeah, maybe it is. See, I thought it was just a blessing. Deep follows the Sikh religion, while his wife, Natasha, is Hindu. I'm expecting all the non-Indians to arrive on time. Indians have a tendency to being late at events and late in functions because they already understand the processes and what's involved in the whole uh, event itself. I'm expecting at least 20% of the white people to be here on time. In Sikh tradition, what happens is when you have a child or when you're naming a child, the letter that that child's name must begin with is given to you um, by the priest. So they open up their holy book, it's called the Guru Granth Sahib, and you open it up and the first letter of the first word at the top of the page, that's the letter you use to name your child. So it's a divine way of naming your children. I think over time, traditions evolve and we, you know, we learn to become more practical and Deep and I had arrived at names that we liked for our children far before anyone opened any books. So we, um, we still observe the tradition in the sense that we have a ceremony to bless both our children, invite people to come and see the baby and come and take part in um, the, the sort of the ritual around blessing a baby in the Sikh tradition, but we'd named him far before then. <laughs> Once the holy book is carefully stowed away, the family do what they do best. Can you start inviting guests over now? Our children can do whatever they want. If they want to take over the business tomorrow, they can do that. It's very cute, your baby. He yeah. looks like his daddy, that's why. <laughs> Natasha is very adamant about making them doctors, like all Indian families want their children to be doctors. I don't come from that school of thought, I think. Whatever makes Zavan happy, Zavan should do. Whatever makes Nishka happy, Nishka should do. I will not get in their way, nor will I say to them that one line that Indians love to say to all their children, what will people think? What would, how, what would the Kumars think? What would anyone else think? It doesn't matter. And just relax, that's amazing, man. Amazing. On a rare day where there is no scheduled event, Deep's making the most of the downtime. So just looking at him, just giving a smile every now and again. It's your last, last day of freedom as well, so... <laughs> he and marketing man Ash have their eye on the new gay That's wedding market. Are you the groom and groom? But it's a fine line between wanting to move forward 
and not upsetting their traditional market. Let me introduce you to your groom. <laughs> it's funny because Indian weddings actually happen like that. Let me introduce you to the groom <laughs> on the wedding day. The day. <laughs> it's authentic. There's two separate videos, two separate markets, two separate clientele, two separate things we're sending it out to, two different pages at two different times. So no two people will see it at the same time. Unless they're gay as well as Indian at the same time. Then maybe, then we'll have how are you going? We have an influx of inquiries that have come to us of the gay and lesbian community that want to get married. Are you ready? We love doing events um, and um, catering for their needs is um, just as important as catering for the standard Indian arranged marriage couple. We should have got some dry ice ready. Your smoke's going everywhere boy, but where it needs to go. <laughs> I'm excited. See what Ashley can produce. I'll be looking forward to the final cut of the video. If it's anything like his Christmas videos, I'll be a little bit worried. <laughs> I am a little bit nervous, yes. Dad's always a little bit scared that how the community will react. We have certain people that are a little bit in our Indian community, um, very orthodox in their thinking, and may not accept that openly. It will be Manjit, once again, who has the final say. <laughs> If Chef Varun is to have any chance of modernising the family's signature restaurant, he needs to get Manjit to approve his new dishes. Dad is the toughest one to please. He's the... He always says Manjit is a man, Manjit is a brand, but Manjit always has the final say. And he's the toughest guy to please. That's a duck curry. It's going to be tears from Varun. It'll be a thing. Are you calling it duck curry or duck something? We call it duck curry. This is confit. Confit is a cooking and it's not fat. So, what you're saying is that yeah, like this that. curry will go on top of it? You can pour it on top. Okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'll just make it like this. I believe in myself. I was questioned about the eggplant dish. Dad said, oh, you're, you're the smoke's going to ruin the flavour of it. Signature dish of Manjits. The Balmain bug curry. Oh, Indians don't use Balmain bugs, no, no, lobster's too expensive, blah, blah, blah. Boom. Rock and roll dish. Black pepper, emily, sesame. Touch of a coconut, just to balance out the flavor. Mm. You want to keep onion? Not onion would work for Indians. Indians will not probably touch it. Uh, not modern, not Indians living in Australia, they will give it a go. They, they are <clears throat> open, they would love it. But Indians coming from India again, uh, won't even look at it. Flavor is nice, this, <clears throat> very nice. Not too strong? I like it, but I would prefer it. Chili? A little more lighter, rather than thicker. Yeah, it's very really light. Too thick. I fought with you for three years about this. If it doesn't work, I'll go back to doing traditional Indian stuff. Just give me six months of trial, let me just do my way. I guarantee- I'm not stopping you. I'm you're not stopping you're you. You're not stopping me, but you're not letting me do it. Yeah, so I'm simple. not letting you do it because- the, you So you're not stopping me, but you're not letting me do no, it. So I have, to, way, give, I have to give my me. opinion. I have to give my opinion. I know my Indian clientele more than anybody else known in the world. I'm telling you that I've got two clientels here. I've catered to your clientele with their dals, with all that sort of stuff, with the chana, with the batura. Not disputing so that. So as long as you're not changing their menu, I'm happy. Duck is definitely coming because the, if it, that doesn't come, Varun leaves me. Simple as me. <laughs> he won't work with me. While Varun didn't get the green light for his entire menu, his duck curry has earned its place. So it all goes to shit. Yeah, you know, dad, Dad's at the higher ground and we'll be making butter chicken and rice the rest of my life. Okay, it should be making its way to you over the English Channel now. Marketing man Ash is overseas, but has managed to finish editing one of the new promotional videos. So let me just give a rough sort of understanding. This is a video, the promo video for the gay community, so yeah. we can target that sort of section of the market for Concord Function Centre only. Yeah, I think it's, it opens up a new market that um, 
is probably not still not widely accepted uh, across a lot of function centers. In, uh, this is uh, news to me, I was just told yesterday to come here to have a look at this video. We're trying to get a Manjeet float in the Mardi Gras this year. Great, so we'll have a bunch of gay guys in turbans walking around. <laughs> so I reckon this will show that you guys are, you know, go gay. Um, I think Dad will be initially taken back a little bit on um, this new market that we're expanding. This is perfect. We're doing an Indian one as well. We did it on the same day. This is quite long. That's, that needs to be chopped a little bit. I really don't want to promote as a gay wedding uh, to the gay, world. Gay only. Gay only. Because it's uh, very new and I know it's becoming lawful now, but we don't want to promote uh, because it might affect to our other market, particularly Indians, you know? Indian market, it might. Maybe there are many Indians nowadays who are gays. You know, we, we don't know. Yeah, fair enough. But uh, our majority of the clients are Indian. Probably they are still against uh, the gay um, concept. We don't have to be in your face. Hey, we're here and gay and proud. Just, we, we support it. We can cater it. Enjoy it. Love is love, no. Yeah, I think it, yeah, it'll work well. I think it'll come out well. And love is love, Ash. We'll miss you. Love is love. Love you too, Dave. My concern is, at my age, there are people who might say, hey, which direction are you going? So that is the only concern I had in my mind. But the way you want to market it, it's perfectly fine. This is a function center. There could be, anybody can come and do any function, provided that's within the, uh, you know, ethical, ethical, healthy, and in terms of not anything illegal. It's a good win for Deep. From a business point of view, it's money, it's revenue. It's, it's, it's expansion, it's growth. Um, we're not going to say no to that. While Deep's new video is boldly looking forward, today Natasha is celebrating a tradition thousands of years old. It's observed on the fourth day after a full moon on the Indian calendar, or usually around the time of October, November. A fasting ceremony called Kava Chot. The sentiment behind it is that I'm going to sacrifice Today, um, I'm going to fast, um, and that fasting is said to create some divine energy. And I'm going to channel that energy to a long, healthy, and prosperous life for my husband. The whole idea, I think, is in those days, like the husbands were the protectors. So they would, they would say, thank you for taking care of me. But there used to be some, like some girls in our family back in India, like cousins and aunties and stuff. And I remember they used to, they started keeping Kavachot even before they got married. That's true. Yeah. Because yeah. before you get married, the significance is that if you fast and then you, you get a good husband. You get a good husband. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that. Deep himself is not very religious. He and himself follows traditions and rituals and, and he respects, you know, things that <clears throat> the family want him to. <laughs> Religion doesn't need to be rigid. It doesn't need to have rules and regulations. When I was growing up, I was the only brown kid in school. Um, I got a lot of, I got teased. I got, um, when I used to wear a turban, kids used to pull on it. So, uh, mum took me and we got a haircut. Um, um, we just never grew it back again. I don't think I'm judged in the community for not wearing it. This is now Australia. Just because I don't wear a turban doesn't mean I'm not Sikh. I still am, um, and I'm proud, to, proud of that, you know. They want that cannabis is ready. Joanna, would you mind to just take it once it's ready, please? Two parent speeches, the MC will coordinate it. Keep in touch with the MC with everything on there. Main course is buffet style. You should fly through buffet because half these guests are fasting, right? So you shouldn't have a very long delay in it. Yep. Natasha might be channeling divine energy towards her husband, but Deep needs to remain focused on tonight's function.
Um, no cash bar tonight, everything's on tab. So give them anything they want, just tab them and Opals will pay the bill, whatever it is at the end of the night. They're happy-go-lucky people, you'll have a beautiful time. This evening, the family are both working and celebrating. Then I'll bring the Dasha here. They're running a wedding reception for their close friends. There's no tables yelling for different entrees, main course desserts. Everyone's having the same thing, piece of cake. So I'm not stressed out, this is why I'm like Mr. Relax today. You don't get to spend that time with your friends partying because you have to work. Essentially, then you're constantly doing the work all the time. Can we do one more, just yeah. with this one? Yeah. Like this yeah. the... Tonight's event needs to work around the rising of the moon. Apparently the moon is coming at 9.53, so, so food will be served at 10. We'll be ready at 9.52, no worries. That's when the women will break their fast. Right here, uncle. Uncle, right here. Oh. Two extra people on table 12, just so you know. I've already put the two chairs there, but I need two settings. Cutlery, crockery, glasses, plates, spoons. Table 12? 12. Many of the women have decided it's OK to break their fast a little bit earlier than planned. Half the function has got up and walked outside and tried to find this moon that doesn't exist right now. Um, Google and all news reports and whatnot, it doesn't come out to 9.45. But everyone out here is really, really hungry. The women need to pay their respects to the moon which is a form of their god, Lord nice Shiva. Process. But the problem is, the moon hasn't risen yet. What they're going to do is they're going to fudge it and use the stars and use that as the moon. All right, they're calling us inside now, so let's go. Let's go. With the food service almost complete, the Gudral family finally get time to relax. Family is the most important thing. It's our core and crust of our business. Um, we can't really have our business without our family and we can't really have our family without a business. I'd like to say I have final say, but that wouldn't be the case. I think it depends on Dad, Vern and me. I don't think Dad will ever retire. I think he'll work till his last days. Dad will never retire. He, he's, he's, he's set in his ways. He'll wake up, he'll do the prayers, he'll get a ferry in, he'll come to the restaurant, He'll sit here for two hours. He won't do anything. He'll just sit there in the corner. And that's totally cool. That's Dad. Yeah, when, when this magic 10.0 happening in the next 10 ventures I open up, Dad will still be here doing the same thing. He's, he's part of the furniture, right? So he's never going to let go. He never will. He, he loves it. And people love him. No retirement at this stage, and no retirement till doctor tell me you're retired. Completely retired. <laughs> I will keep telling them, uh, gain respect as much as you can in the community, within the family, and be united.